You know, I always wanted to make games, and especially I liked first-person games. I played a lot of those as a kid. A couple of months ago I downloaded Unity and started making a series of uh, small playable demos that basically document my journey of learning Unity. My idea was that if I start making builds early, it may be interesting to look back at those at some point and see how it all started. So in this video I want to talk a little bit about those demos. It all started with a controller. Unlike Unreal, Unity doesn't come with a solid first-person controller out of the box. I tried some controllers from the Asset Store, but quickly realized that if I want something that suits my needs, I'm better off just doing it myself. So I did, or rather started doing it. It's still very raw, but it's extensible and I know how to fix issues. At some point, when it's ready, I'm gonna publish it on my GitHub, so stay tuned. So as I already mentioned, I chose Unity for these experiments. Last year I also tried a little bit of Godot and Unreal because I wanted to see what all of them have to offer. And in the end I chose Unity because first, unlike Unreal, it allows you to build for WebGL out of the box. Unreal recently dropped official support for that. And second, it seems to have uh, better rendering capabilities than Godot. I think all three of them are very capable and uh, all three have their strong sides. And in this video I'm just sharing my experience and not giving any engine recommendations. So after I made a very basic first person controller, the first thing that I did is I tried making a WebGL build. I tweaked the minimal template a bit to make it occupy the whole window without making people press the full screen button. Initially I was gonna host my builds on GitHub pages since apparently GitHub pages allow you to attach your own domain. But as it turned out Unity's WebGL builds require a very specific Nginx configuration. So in the end I had to host it myself. So I did all that and published my first ever Unity build for WebGL. As you'll see later, all of them will have the same goal, and the goal is to find the red button. And so far, that is the only common theme among them. Other than that, all of them can be absolutely whatever, which is what this whole learning project is called in the first place. In the second unit, I figure out how to do light mapping in Unity. In the third one, I make a pressable button. Oh, and by the way, I make most of the gameplay features with visual scripting. The first person controller, for example, was C Sharp. Because obviously it will be reused a lot between projects, so I wanted it to be kind of like a black box. When I was learning Unreal, I also learned a little bit of C++, and I personally find C Sharp nicer to code in. But for a lot of uh, game-specific features, and especially level-specific features, I find it faster to just use visual scripting. By the way, in case you didn't know, visual scripting is now a part of Unity, since Unity 2021. For previous versions, you have to download Bolt separately, but but now not only it ships with Unity, it's also enabled by default. So when you create a new project in Unity, you can just create a new script graph straight away and start adding your game logic. Which is amazing. If I can just drag pretty nodes around instead of writing C Sharp to make games, <laughs> you bet I will. I'm doing enough of usual coding at work already. Somehow when I do visual scripting, I have more fun than I do when I write C Sharp. And I like having fun. If you're not having fun while making games, then what is even the point? Oh, and also, as I mentioned in my blog on Discord, uh, I think that uh, for flow control, more often than not, visual scripting is even more convenient than C Sharp. Because, you know, it's easy to keep track of what gets executed after what in asynchronous code. And also a lot of nodes abstract a lot of state away, which can be tricky to do in C Sharp. But then of course, for some other stuff, visual scripting sucks. It's not all black and white, of course. But we'll talk more about visual scripting later. The fourth unit introduces smooth procedural transitions. The fifth one was kind of a big one because the controller improved a lot. It has crouching, it has head bobbing, dynamic camera, support for moving platforms, and more. Sixth one is me trying to add textures for the first time. Oh, and just to clarify, since it's more like a blog rather than a game, most of the units are tiny at least for now, because, for example, in this one I spent a lot of time figuring out rendering and workflow for texturing, so I didn't have time to make, you know, an actual level with this stuff. So it was, either I upload this now, or I spend another several evenings on it. And I want to iterate fast. I want it to be raw, and I want to just get stuff out there. 
Because when you spend a lot of time on something, it's really easy to lose motivation. Same goes for the eighth one. It's just one room, but this is when I was figuring out Blender, Substance, Unity, Workflow. Because, you know, in order for your textures to work in Unity, you need to unpack them in Blender. You can't just embed textures into FBX. It won't work with Unity. That one thing is already several button presses. So I made a function in Python to repack them in just one button press. But then even when you do that, Unity still won't import all of the textures. For example, metallic and roughness maps you have to assign manually which is, I have no idea why. So ideally, I still have to write a function for Unity to automate that. Because look, stuff like that, especially if you're using three different apps, uh, it adds up. And you end up dragging stuff around and pressing buttons instead of making your game. And finally, the latest one, the ninth one, adds a settings menu. Uh, like I already said, all of them run in browsers. So if you want to check them out, you can just go to my website and see my progress. Most of them are under 40 megabytes, so download times should be fine for anybody who can watch YouTube. Just keep in mind that prior to whatever 9, there was no loading indicator. So it will be just a black screen when it's loading. I personally think that it's a good format, because if you think about it, what is the better way of sharing your Unity learning progress than just letting people play through it? And obviously it's just the beginning, uh, there will be more of them, and also there will be follow-up videos on this as well. I talk a little bit about what I did in the demos themselves via pictures and walls, but in YouTube videos I can talk about stuff a little bit more in depth. About how I made this or that, you know, what challenges I encountered and so on. So if you're interested in my learning process or in how games are made in general, uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also, if you want to keep track of those playable demos, you can join our Discord. All of the links are going to be in the description. On the Discord server, I post links to the demos in the whatever channel and in whatever chat, you can tell me what you think after playing those demos. I put a lot of effort into it and I'm very curious about what you have to say. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.